So I've been seeing a ton of videos go around about how to make money online. And I feel like they can be either A, boring, or B, not personable at all. And I feel like it's fine if you're just trying to know how to make a few bucks, but if you're trying to make a business or make money that's going to be your full-time income, you want to enjoy what you do. You know, you don't want to be a lawnmower making a million dollars if you hate lawn mowing. Actually, you know what, for a million dollars, yeah, no, I, I'd do it. Point is, you want to enjoy what you do. And in today's video, I'm not only going to talk about how to make make money with only a thousand followers, but I'm also going to be rating each stream of income with its own scale so you know which one's right for you. The way we'll be rating each stream of income is by the following three components. One, how much energy and focus it takes. Two, how fun it is. And three, what's the value slash how profitable can you be? Let's get started. If you're ready for me to roast to all these income sources, let's get started. All right, so the first way you can make money is by managing social media for other businesses. Now, personally, this is how I got started in the online entrepreneurial world because I'm currently 19, but I started my first social media agency when I was 16. And in my first few months of business, I was able to make a couple thousand dollars. So how does social media marketing make money? Now it differs per business, but what I did is businesses needed their social media to grow and they don't want to do it. Like if you're a founder of a coffee shop, you probably just don't want to take pictures all day. So they hired me essentially as an agency to get photographers, creators, and do the whole marketing in order to grow that coffee coffee shop store. I actually did manage a boba shop. That was my first client. It doesn't really matter what it is, but if you're marketing for something that you like, then you know the industry a little bit better. Social media marketing is great for someone that's a photographer, graphic designer, someone that likes visual things. So in regards to the steps of how to make money with social media marketing, what I would do is approach local businesses at first with your services. I literally went door to door when I was 16 and called up businesses so I could manage their Instagram. Was I scared? Yes. Did I get rejected? Yes. Was I absolutely embarrassed? Yes. I would say it was definitely very difficult, especially when you're younger, you get really intimidated to talk to business owners and founders. It's really scary, but I ended up pushing through, pitching myself. Just because there's so much to social media marketing, let me know if you guys would like a whole video about it. Because not only do you have to acquire new clients, but you also have to pitch, negotiate contracts, then do the actual work, then implement and report. So this is where my personal thoughts come in. On a scale of 1 to 10, this definitely takes a 10 out of 10 for energy. My God, will you come out of this exercise feeling really, really raw because people will rip you apart. Social media marketing is very people oriented. Essentially, you'll be talking to people and if you don't like this, it's not for you. It takes a lot of energy and you might get rejected. Now for fun, I give social media marketing a 7 out of 10. It's definitely super fun and you're able just to create content, make Instagram feeds. And if you enjoy those things, that's even better. It can get a little routine oriented because social Social media marketing is kind of the same thing every day, but I do think the work itself is really fun. It just can get very repetitive pretty soon. Now for value, I think social media marketing is definitely a eight out of 10. You can make a lot of money with having an agency. I, I definitely, there's like, there's, like the people with Lamborghinis on YouTube have a social media marketing agency, right? So like, it's very evident that you can make six figures or seven figures by helping brands with social media. The only thing that I have to say about it is you have to understand that if if you're trying to build a sustainable business, you will need to build a team. So I give it an eight out of 10 because you still have expenses as an agency. Not that much really to get started with, but in order to scale and grow it, you might have to pay people, employees, and contractors. So just wanted to be honest with you guys. Overall, I think it's a great experience if you like visual things. All right, the second way you can make money is number two, real estate photography. Now, the reason why I added this to the mix is I personally got myself kind of into this earlier this year. I wasn't super successful with it, but that's why I wanted to talk about it. So what this is, is essentially you just take photos for real estate agents, property managers, basically take pictures of houses so they can market it to their listings. You can make a lot of money from this. I will get into that in a little bit, but basically this is great for someone who has a little bit more knowledge in photography and hates working with people. If you like social media because you like visual stuff, but you hate people, this is really good for you. You deliver drone shots or a certain angle of the house. And as long as you deliver it and it looks good, you're not going to have so much negotiating with that. There's still a lot of talking to agents, but there's less of it than talking to businesses. So if you'd like to take photos for real estate agents, this is what you can expect. Personally for me, I emailed agents in my hometown, Portland. I basically said, hey, I manage a few photographers. This is some of our work. Let me know you're interested for us to shoot your next property or listing. I charged each set around $500 to $1,000. I personally didn't take the photos. I managed people who took the photos. If you're wondering why I did this, I'm extremely experimental and I start random businesses because I'm bored all the time. But long story short, I did that earlier this year and it definitely worked. Real estate agents replied 
and they approve budgets of sometimes more than a thousand dollars. And to answer your question, how much money can you make from this? A lot. If you're charging anywhere from a thousand dollars per shoot and you're shooting every weekend, you could easily be making up to ten thousand dollars a month. Ten thousand dollars a month, man. Pretty good. Pretty good. So in regards to my personal thoughts, I would give this a six out of ten in regards to focus and energy. It is a lot of on-site shooting. You have to travel quite a bit. Like for the most part, I just think there's less expectation from the client because as long as you deliver the photos of the house, then you have a bit more leeway versus social media marketing. If you literally don't portray the brand in that angle, the voice and all those things, it's a little bit more hectic. So that's why I give it a six out of 10 in regards to amount of focus and energy you'll need. I would give this a four out of 10 in regards to how fun it is. You definitely get to travel, but it's pretty repetitive. It's extremely routine oriented. You kind of shoot the same things, but it allows you to have financial freedom, which I give this specific industry a nine out of 10 for value. You can make a lot of money from it. It's pretty profitable because you don't need a ton of people to help you if you are a photographer for yourself and you have the equipment, you should have equipment already. That's one thing to know, but you'll easily make it back if you're doing enough outreach and you get your clients. So that's what I did for the beginning of this year. I don't do any more because again, I got really, really bored. But if you like photography, but you don't like talking to people, this might be for you. <laughs> All right, the third way you can make money is by building a course. So building a course essentially is you teach something in a video format and you sell it on the internet. I have a few friends that do this and they're super successful. Vanessa Lau sells social media marketing and Instagram growth courses. I know a guy named Iman Godzi who does similar thing. There's like a bunch of people that do it. I personally don't have a course and I'll explain why. Basically you repackage your knowledge into video format to sell to people and you're kind of like your own professor in a way. You have your own class and you teach people your knowledge. In regards to this steps of building a course. Basically, you record videos of your knowledge, you market it on websites like Skillshare, basically any site that's like a marketplace, or you could build your own course platform, but then you market it using YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and basically try to make videos to sell your product. It's more passive income than like all the other ones, but I'll go into why it wasn't for me. I definitely think you can make a lot of money from this. Like if your course is a thousand dollars and you sell just like 10 courses, you make $10,000 a month. So extremely profitable. I just think it's pretty competitive. I would say it's a 10 out of 10 in regards to focus and energy. Yes, filming yourself is not hard, but marketing it, spending ad budget. There's a lot of focus and energy that goes into building a great course and experience. People think you just record yourself and it's over. Oh no, Sally, it, it takes a lot of sweat, blood and tears. I think it's blood, sweat and tears, but you get the point. I would give this a seven out of 10 for being fun. I think it's really fun if you like talking. If you don't like talking, this might be absolutely horrific. I remember personally for me, I get really bored watching webinars like I not sit for an hour. So I definitely didn't want to make a course because I don't like doing that. So in the future, if I were to build a course, it would just have to be really fun, energetic, animated, honestly, ADHD. And that's personally the method of how I learn. So just something to keep in mind. It's fun if you enjoy talking and if you like the work you're making. And of course, value, it's a 10 out of 10. I think it's extremely profitable if you have things that you want to share. And especially with the educational system that's kind of messed up, <laughs> if you're finding people an affordable way to learn rather than going to school. All right, let's talk about number four, Etsy. So if you sell a product and you have a little bit of a crafty mindset, this is for you. I started out my first business ever, like when I was nine, I believe it was selling keychains or I forgot if it was the well, like, one of my first businesses ever was when I was nine years old and I made clay keychains out of polymer clay and I sold it on Etsy, eBay, and everywhere. So I definitely think that if you're someone that loves crafts and knickknacks, you don't mind sitting at a table just making random things or importing things and then exporting them to sell on your website. I think this business is for you. If you're trying to sell a product, what I would do is create something that you love, start there. Like you don't want to sell something that you don't like because then you don't know how to market it as well. So right after you have the idea of the product, you want to build a website, I recommend Shopify. Anywhere really works, but I recommend them. And if you would like, you can just market it on YouTube, TikTok, and Instagram, which I'm thinking to develop more about how to do that step by step. Let me know if you guys would like to see a more in-depth world about how to market e-commerce store since I had experience with that. But long story short, you have the product, you build a site, you market it. That cycle is kind of the game. Now I know I skimmed over a lot of details, but like I said, let me know if you like a whole video about that. So personally for me, I literally had an e-commerce store called Simply Kawaii. I sold squishy buns and clay keychains. 
it was very unprofitable. I just enjoyed it so much. I really didn't care about the money. Like I made $5,000 when I was like nine years old, but I also spent like $5,000 to do it. It's less profitable, but it's really fun. So here's my personal thoughts. I definitely think building an Etsy or e-commerce store will take a lot of energy. I will give this a nine out of 10 in regards to required focus, but I give this a 10 out of 10 in regards to how fun it is. Man, like I really wish I still had my e-commerce store because it was just so fun making polymer keychains. Like look here. Like, I literally draw stuff like this for fun. I just always like wish I could just sell it because it's just so fun to give that experience to someone else. So with that being said, it is a two out of 10 in regards to value. You don't make a ton of profit from it. You can make a ton of revenue, but profit is a whole other story. So don't be surprised when you make a million dollars, but you spend about 999,000. Yeah, that's just me though, so. All right, so the fifth and most final way you can make money is coaching. Whether you're a tutor or you're a personal coach, this is great if you're someone that just likes to teach, but you don't like social media that much. I personally tutored when I was in high school trying to make a few extra dollars. I feel like we've all did that maybe on a smaller scale, but I definitely think being a teacher without digital is actually doable. I just did a coaching call yesterday for $500 an hour. That is my hourly rate and people pay me to tell them how to grow their social media for a session and it's really fun for me. I don't do it all the time, but when I did it in the past for like kids and students, I charged like 40 bucks for my math teaching, right? So it definitely depends on what industry you're going for and who you're targeting, but it's definitely such a great experience if you're not a huge fan of social media, but you want to make a business online. So whether it's doing a video call coaching or an in-person class, I really think tutoring or coaching is a great income source. So in regards to steps to do this, my recommendation and what I do essentially is I do put out my website of my coaching and whether it's music, which I've done before, math, which I've done before, or like social media marketing, you want to build a site of who you are and why you know what you do. So essentially the next step is to find your students. So for this example, I'm going to use music because I did play violin for nine years of my life. So if it were me, I would go sell my services to other music shops and be a teacher in that community. But I can also make a YouTube video where I'm teaching people for free and then whoever wants to book a call with me to have a full in-person session can't. You still have to do marketing online but if you're someone that likes conversations and that human touch and that gives you value and that makes you happy then I recommend this a hundred percent. In regards to focus and energy I give this eight out of ten. You do have to talk to people in person or over video call so you have to have energy when teaching or else your students will probably not want to come back. So it does take a lot of energy but I definitely give this a ten out of ten in regards to fun. It is so fulfilling to teach people in real life. Sometimes when you're on the screen all the time, you don't really feel human contact. So this is just overall a great experience. In regards to value, I give this a six out of 10. It's not scalable and it's extremely time intensive. As you know, it's an hourly rate, but I definitely think that it's worth it if you enjoy talking to people. So this is just part one of how to make money online. Let me know if you guys would like other options as well. I made a video in the past about how I make money, but I feel like this series is more of a general point of view just because I I start so many businesses and hustles and I would love to give my experience on it. So let me know if you like a part two and I'll definitely make that video. I want to leave off this video with one last important note. If you made it towards the end, like I don't even know what to say. I freaking love you. Darmination, y'all are the best. I want to say if you want more marketing tips, I do have a podcast and you guys can listen to more of the secrets and tips of how to market yourself for your online businesses. I will link it below in the description if you want to check it out. All right. So this leads us to the final thing I want to go over. I'm literally so excited. So say you have five businesses and you realize, okay, maybe three of them are the ones that you actually would enjoy doing. Imagine you're just able to make a thousand dollars from each type of business. So in the course of a month, you make $3,000 total. I think the key with starting a business is to mix and match, try different things that resonate with yourself to see if you want to keep continuing it. You don't have to marry the first person you see, so you don't have to continue the first business you start with. So with that being said, I hope you know that you don't necessarily need a nine to five in order to survive. You can take these tips and tricks and build a lifestyle for you. You might want to balance some of these businesses with your other job. You might just want to do one side hustle and make it your full-time thing. Everybody is different and it all depends on your goals. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you guys want to be the next comment winner, comment below. Oh my god, I have a call and I'm late to it. I love you guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.